Hi, let's hope this stays somewhat straight. Welcome back. It's been a while and I have been watching the Config 2025, the keynote with all the new product releases from Figma. And probably as you are, I am super excited about most of the things. So I thought I would give this a quick rundown and share my opinion with you and see what this will bring for the future. So I've seen a lot of excitement, a lot of people being really stoked about what is coming up and of course a little bit of backlash. People who are criticizing the latest product decisions who are not too content to say the least. So let's dive right in. All right, so the first big change, the first big feature that we have seen this year in 2025 is Figma Grids. So Grids, for those of you who are not too familiar with this, are one of the biggest way of positioning elements on the web. Design Tools always had this flaw that the final decision on how the developer would actually position an element on a website would heavily depend on how this element would behave. Would it be a fixed element? Would it be something that would be floating over the screen? Or should it move within the content float, as you say in CSS speak? And yeah, actually Figma tried to fix this with the auto layout, with flex options. They did a great job in the past, but they couldn't cover everything really. Now with the grid system support, this has actually gotten a little bit more complete. So grids are a way of positioning elements very similar to Flexbox and they help with creating responsive pages, but they also help with creating all kinds of layouts on the web. And this is actually what Figma has become really, really good at. Just from a first look, just from trying out grids a little bit, I must say I'm pretty impressed with the implementation. It's really good, it's really reactive, it really plays well with different uh, content sizes, child element sizes, all this. And I'm really, really hoping that this will help become a big, big part of our design workflow. So this is probably going to be amazing, especially for developers who will have to implement the whole thing later on. Now, recently, auto layout has been a little bit random. So ever since the 2024 release of auto layout, there were some inconsistencies about element sizes. So um, yeah, elements would roughly change or randomly change their size from hug or fill to fixed element sizes or the other way around. You couldn't really tell why that was and it would cause a lot of manual labor. So going back and forth to different elements, resizing them and adjusting them to the actual situation. Now, this looks to be solved in the grid variant and maybe this behavior has already been something like an anticipation of grids. But we'll see in our day-to-day -day work how grids will actually turn out and how practical they will be. Moving on to Figma sites. So Figma sites looks amazing, especially for those of you who have zero experience with development or who don't necessarily need to or want to talk to a developer to actually implement their sites. And this looks like something that could be super, super powerful. Think of building personal blogs, think of building portfolios, landing pages, or just websites for small businesses. This sounds like it's a really, really good tool. And just looking at what they have presented, things look very familiar, a little bit close to tools like Framer that you are familiar with. So this could be really, really nice. However, with Figma sites, one thing to keep in mind is that websites nowadays are actually fairly complex. So as a website owner and as a website designer and editor, I'm expecting the website to uh, have a lot of animation. I expect it to implement third-party APIs or I expect this to have complex content management capabilities. So I want to have 
layered content or uh, different content collections intertwined with each other, um, something to build, say, for example, team repositories or um, news categories with different articles, different types of content, videos, etc. All these things which we take for granted nowadays, but that are actually quite complex to handle in the back end. And here Figma really has to prove if their CMS capabilities, if their CMS function is complex enough and yeah, capable enough to actually handle those things. Even tools like Framer and Webflow do have their limitations when it comes to these more complex sites. So this going on moving forward will be super, super exciting to see how it will actually handle real life usage. Two other things are quite important with Figma sites and yeah, they are a little bit on the unknown at the moment. The first one being uh, the actual code base. So how does the output, how does the code output that Figma sites is creating, how does it look like? Will it be good and stable code or will it be more on the uh, diff heavy side? Now, if you compare Framer and Webflow, there's actually a huge difference in how they build code. Well, Framer on the one side is creating React components, React modules that um, build up the website. Um, they are, they tend to be quite developer friendly. However, they have some issues with things like SEO, with things like uh, accessibility and semantic web structures. Webflow, on the other hand, is a true HTML DOM builder. So everything you see on Webflow is actual proper semantic HTML as you would build it if you would build HTML manually. Now with Figma sites, just judging from their own landing page, it looks like they are more on the framer end. So they are building React components. Um, which might be a bit tricky when it comes to building accessible semantic websites, but we will have to see that. The other thing that is still in the unknown is pricing, of course. So will they price Figma sites more aggressively, more competitive compared to Framer or Webflow, or will it be a premium product? One other thing I'm super excited about is Figma Draw. And I am actually really looking forward to creating another video about Figma Draw, which will definitely be some kind of illustrator competitor, something that will probably get me pull out my graphic tablet from the uh, cupboard again and just play around with it, do some illustrations and just see what we can do. Now, in the past, we did have a lot of component libraries and um, icon libraries and illustration libraries and even uh, some plugins that would help us create text on uh, text on passes, text on curves, these whole things. I have to adjust my screen again here. Um, yes. So, but now this all seems to be a big part of the Figma workflow and just from checking it out briefly, it looks super, super cool. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely excited to play a bit more with that. Of course, it does have some flaws if you compare it to a pro tool like Illustrator. So Illustrator is actually running a, a postscript, so a PDF EPS uh, workflow which allows for a huge variety of vectors and of course it allows you to use print files like EPS or PDF. Now Figma can't do the same. Figma is based on SVG and with SVG do come some limitations. One big limitation for example is the way that vector points are handled. So vector points in SVG are usually based on pixels and there are some limitations on how much information you can store in a pixel which sometimes results in funny hiccups, so funny uh, pass issues, funny cutoffs, or even if you resize a shape, make it really small and then resize it, scale it back up, um, it will lose some detail or some of the points will have moved. This is historically has always been an issue with Figma, unfortunately, and I really hope that they found a way to solve this or that going forward, uh, this will not be too much of an issue. 
Um, in the end, of course, we'll have to see how that plays out um, if we are using uh, Figma Draw in, yeah, in the live process. But let's see. I'm really, really excited for Figma Draw and just looking at the brushes, they look so good. This will be really, really cool. Figma Make, yeah, so Figma Make is probably the tool I'm actually the least excited about. Vibe coding has been a big thing. Uh, we have seen Brad from Design Joy take down Lovable. We have seen, yeah, a lot of uh, really, really cool showcases. Um, Ran Segal uh, from Flux Design, he actually showed a whole rundown of uh, creating a website with Lovable. Um, and all the cutbacks, all the drawbacks that this has, because we've seen that we can actually build something really, really fast, but then maintaining it and um, actually extending it can be quite cumbersome. Now, Figma has promised to actually fix this and to make all the elements editable, but Lovable has done the same and uh, yeah, the functions or the uh, range of uh, editability is not impressive. So I'm looking forward to see Figma make actually fix all of these flaws. Um, but vibe coding, vibe designing, will it be a thing in 2025? Will it be something that can be done on production level? To be honest, I'm not too sure about it, but I'm also very, very keen on being proven wrong. Lastly, Figma bus. So, Figma bus could be a game changer when working with teams, when working with marketing teams, when working with people who are outside of the product and UX uh, area. And this is actually one of the biggest uh, underlying themes of this 2025 release, that Figma is kind of moving away from the product UI UX world deeper into the holistic overall design uh, mentality of companies. And I think this is actually a good thing. We have been using Figma to create logos, to create brand designs, and also to create marketing designs for a while now. And they are trying to get into, yeah, something like Adobe Express, Canva, into this kind of domain. So far, seeing what they've done looked amazing. Um, however, if you compare Figma bus straight to Canva, there is still some flaws. There is still some things that Canva can do that Figma bus doesn't seem to have in the feature set. One big thing, of course, is animations. So um, with Canva, you are able not only to create some simple animations, but you could, in theory, create like full videos, full social media videos, reels, video ads, all these kind of things. There's actually some uh, amazing YouTube videos on people who did that, who created like professional uh, video advertising. I might link one uh, up here, um, just using Canva as an editing tool. And while the interface of Canva feels a little bit unprofessional or toy-like, it's actually super approachable for those who are not too familiar with professional design software. And this is something where Figma could actually take the exact opposite approach. So instead of uh, making design accessible for those who don't like design software, it could make create big amounts of marketing graphics accessible for professional designers who are used to the tools that they have who are who want actually um, a deeper integration with the professional design software Figma in this case um, and still want to have access, still want to have this interface to the marketing team, to the brand team, to the um, overall yeah, design team in their company. So I'm excited to see what Figma bus can offer, but I'm not too sure that uh, marketing teams who are already using Canva successfully will ditch Canva for Figma bus. So this is definitely yeah, a tough crowd, definitely a tough space to get into, but I'm excited for it. So what are you excited about? What are your favorite, what are you, your features that you are most excited about in the Config 2025 launch? How do you feel about the whole move away from product design, away from UX design, 
towards something that is more holistic, something that is more overarching design marketing brand. Let me know in the comments below. I'm really excited and I will see you in the next one, hopefully where I will be talking about Figma Draw and give this a spin. Looking forward to that. See you.